everyone, and welcome to a real conversation between two native English speakers. I'm Liz Wade, and this is Adam Navis. Hi, Adam. Hello. And today we are talking about the Spotlight English program, Truth and Reconciliation for Canada. And I did want to start out this uh, video or podcast uh, saying that this program is kind of an, not kind of, it is an upsetting program. And it does yeah. talk about things that are very difficult to talk about um, and are are issues that people still face today. So if this is a program that is just too much for you, um, I get it. And um, yeah, this isn't going to be an uplifting one. Right. And uh, we're, we're going to try and talk about it, even though it's a very difficult issue. And so I did want to make that clear uh, before we start talking about this program. Um, uh, yeah. So with that, with that warning out of the way, if you have not listened to this program and you do want to listen to it, um, you can find it on YouTube or you can follow along with the script on our website at www.spotlightenglish.com. You can also download our app for either Android or Apple devices and uh, check out our videos and podcasts that way. So uh, without further ado, uh, as they say, uh, yeah, let's get into this program. Uh, I did want to talk about a little bit about what the program is about to start off with. And it really begins with uh, something that, uh, is there a country in the world that this has not touched? Uh, colonialism. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, you maybe you want to introduce that part, Adam. Well, colonialism, uh, a colony, it, that's the word, um, to, to make uh, one country sends out a group of its own people to another place and establishes mm -hmm. a colony. Now, colonialism would be that that group of people takes control of that country or in influences that country in ways that kind of hurts the people who are already there. Right now, right. I'm I'm simplifying. Maybe thinking that they're doing good. Thinking that they're doing thinking good, that thinking they're that they're better, thinking that they're bringing some kind of benefit to that society. But it right. is it is historically destructive. Yes, um, you know, of course, people already living there. I'm going to take the states as an example, right? Um, there have been people living in the United States for uh, many, many, many years, long uh, before there was a United yeah. States. Yes, exactly. The uh, Native Americans, right? Different tribes of um, yeah. uh, indigenous people lived here. And then uh, Europeans came over and started their colonies, took over those people. Um, often and even today, uh, those people are uh, looked down upon or treated differently or, um, you know, told that they're maybe just uh, that their culture isn't as good and they're trying to um, uh, be brought over to Western culture. And uh, so that is an example from the United States where we are, but this program specifically focuses on this issue in Canada and especially for uh, children's schools in yeah. Canada. So uh, this program is really about OK, so the, the program starts with colonialism and then uh, goes into how the Europeans who settled in in Canada, um, how they started to deal with what they called the Indian problem, which, uh, you know, even saying those words is is very difficult. I feel like it's. Yeah, it's a horrible thing to say, um, basically trying to get the people who were natively there, the indigenous people right. or the First Nations people, I think and is the we, other. We should say that um, for those people who'd be confused why they would be called Indians, which is a very, yeah. I, I'm using it cringy. Yes. Because it's not a, a label that we, we apply, but in this context, we're talking about it historically. 
Uh, people thought they, when they, Europeans thought they had found the country of India. So they made yes. a huge mistake and they called people Indians. I mean, maybe you know this as viewers, but that's, yeah. so when we say native peoples or Indians, they're not people from India. Right. Yes. So it, 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 we generally, that is not a label that is used it, by yes. people much anymore. And it, and it is offensive. It is an generally. offensive, yes. So um, really, we should be using terms like First Nations people or yes. Indigenous people. Some people uh, will use the word Aboriginal people. Yeah. Um, but I think a more general term is actually First Nations or um, right. uh, Native Americans. But anyway. We're, but we're using it here, and it just supports your point of that this was... This was the language that was being used at the time and calling it a problem was also, so it's doubly problematic. Yes. That's all I wanted to say. So uh, the Europeans who settled there, they were trying to uh, get rid of the culture of the native people there and bring them over to the, uh, the culture of the Western people, which they said was, uh, it was just better, right? Um, yeah. That they were more civilized or that they were... Yeah, better. That they were smarter, Which that any, their beliefs were Any way you can better. measure better. Right. Yeah. And so there was a campaign by the by the Canadian government. And, and I do want to be clear. Uh, this program is about Canada, but this problem has happened in many places of the world. Yeah. So um, I don't want to say that only Canada is the bad guy or, um, you know, this hasn't happened anywhere else but Canada, because that's not true. Right. But just this program is focused on Canada. Um, and we will Canadian... get to some of the good things as we <laughs> later yes. on in the program that Canada did. So let's give them yes. a thumbs up. Uh, but... but to set up the history... Um, the Canadian government actually did take part in trying to remove the culture of the First Nations people there. Yeah. Um, and part of that was uh, taking uh, Native uh, children and... Yep. Uh, it's hard to even say, to... to even like articulate that this happened, right? Yes. Oh, my goodness. They took Native children from their families and put them in these residential schools. That's what they that's what they call them um, that were managed by churches, by uh, other religious, you know, religious leaders or um, I believe some were by the government as well. And the purpose of those schools was to basically uh, strip their native culture and give them Western culture, European right. culture. So they did it by, they couldn't speak their native language. They right. had to wear, they couldn't wear their clothing or basically their anything. Their native clothing. Any, I mean, they could wear clothing, yes, but yeah. they're, they're um, uh, but anything that uh, was part of that culture. So food, I mean, food, clothing, language, traditions, all of that yeah. was forbidden. And mm -hmm. if that weren't bad enough, the conditions in many of these schools were... I'm trying to think of a, a word deplorable. Here's a here's a good word. It's like yeah, horrible, deplorable. Uh, they were tragic. not they were not conditions that were that were good for children or any person or any any person at all. Um, yeah. So there were things that um, children would die in very large numbers because of these conditions, and they would be buried at the schools. And the parents would never know. They just wouldn't be told. Oh they wouldn't be informed. Um, and it, yeah, that is. Uh, I just want to pause here and just um, really think about that fact that right. so many parents were were never told that their children had died. Yeah, that's. I I can't even think of a word that can convey how. Yeah how like tragic that is. If, yeah. if my children were taken away from me and they disappeared forever, right. I would be broken. Yeah. And I'm sure those parents were, you know, yes. like, like I think, I think part of the difficulty of, uh, 
what we're talking about today is, you know, if I if I if I was backing, you know, backing up my car and I I I hit your car, Liz, and it made a dent, that would be a bad thing, right? Right. But I could apologize for it, and no one was hurt. Okay, if I fell, if I accidentally hurt one of your children and was felt bad about it, and but you knew it was an accident, right? It would be more serious, but we could right. find a way forward. But this program is about when things are so bad, like the right. worst of the worst, in a way that you it would break you as a parent. How do right. you move forward with that? And especially when those events happened over a hundred years span. Well, so many people. And I, I just I want to pause there, too, because um, even just this past summer in 2021, yeah. uh, at least two more sites of like burial sites, mass graves of children were found yeah. uh, at some of these residential schools. This isn't something that happened and then it was yes. done and then it was, you know, exposed and dealt with. Right. This is something that continues today, that we are continuing to feel the the repercussions, the results of today. Yeah. Well, and if we can move to what we can do, I yes. think one of the things that I really took from this program was just because something happened 100 years ago or 200 years ago, and I'm not, I didn't do it. I'm not. I didn't do any of those things. I still represent something, right? As a man, right? As a person who has white skin, who mm -hmm. is not a native person, I still represent something. And there right. can be value in me owning that representation and then acting out of that representation to apologize, to right. listen to someone's pain and someone's story. Um, even if they weren't affected, like if it was a grandparent or something like that, who was affected like that. So I don't know how to live that out all the time. Right. But I think that's one of the things we can recognize that there is a power in that. And we can't just be like, that's a long time ago. It had nothing right. to do with me. Well, that is that is one of the things that the Canadian government uh, finally, I think it is, it was in 2006, where they admitted that this was a wrong policy, which... That, that's a very long time, right? Um, but but they admitted that it was a wrong policy. And then this program specifically is titled after the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission. Yes, Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which had which had a job to talk to the people in the residential schools and hear their stories. And um, yeah, I mean we. We have talked before many times about how stories are so important, right? Mm -hmm. And telling your story and feeling heard and learning from it, learning about people from their story is so important. Right. Um, and uh, so part of the, that was part of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's job to hear those stories, to um, <clears throat> uh, file them away, to yeah. remember them. Yeah, to right? memorialize. I mean, yes. that's what we, we when we say memorial, sometimes we make a statue, but it's like <clears throat> no one wants to be forgotten and we don't want to repeat right. what happened. So we have to remember it and we have to, I mean, in some ways, us having a program, a spotlight program and talking about it is our small way of saying we want to tell the world about this because these were real people Real, right. real children who died, real people who were affected. It's not just, oh, let's just hear this thing and move on. And it's just our way of saying this happens around the world, but it shouldn't. Right. Yep. And and when it happens, we can work towards steps uh, to listen to people who it happened to. We right. can we can start steps of reconciliation and that takes work and it takes um, it takes being willing yeah. to listen and to say, I was wrong and I am part of this bad system right. and I want to learn how to do better. Right. Um, and so the, the truth and reconciliation commission actually, uh, 
it is, it's already done. It went through Canada and it, um, you know, visited a bunch of cities. It, it made these stories. Um, and it, it, it tried to provide a way for, you know, the government and, uh, victims to talk together. And, um, I mean, I don't, if you have the government say that they're sorry or provide money, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't bring children back. Right. Right. Um, but, but, but even how, it, how much money would a child, I mean, in right. some ways that's not what people want. Right. I mean, right. sure. It's great. If you say, okay, we'll give you X amount of some amount of dollars because this bad thing happened, but that doesn't right. make it better. You know, like what I think what people want is acknowledgement yeah. and they want someone to say this wasn't right. Right. Um, and so there is a there is an organization that is uh, that came out of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and it's called the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation. And they have promised to keep those stories um, and those those truths uh, safe and and honored to honor them, to honor the memory, to uh, make sure that these things don't happen again in Canada and hopefully, hopefully anywhere around the world that they're happening. Right. Yeah. Um, but the the program does end on a on a positive note. And I I will say it is a really difficult thing for me to think about personally. Um, and I think forgiveness always is. Maybe, yeah. uh, but there, there is a person who, um, there, well, there is another program we have that is coming that talks about how two men, uh, formed a friendship working toward this reconciliation. One is, um, a Canadian, he's a non-indigenous person. And then, uh, Isidore Charters is an indigenous person and um, these people formed a friendship uh, over reconciliation so working right. toward that so that is a thing that uh, we can we can look forward to I don't I don't think it's an easy answer well it's I think it is the step. only answer really that reconciliation yeah. has to happen in in relationship and so yeah. it can't I mean in one ways the government had a responsibility to do something but governments change and governments aren't you know, you've got to have a, a an individual. You've got to have someone you know. You've got to you've got to reach out and and try to understand people and understand their pain. So I think it's not a satisfactory answer, but it's the only answer. Yeah. Um. Well, then I'm gonna I'm gonna end this uh, conversation, Adam, with uh, a quote from this program that actually very uh, very smartly says what you just said. Um, it is from from the man Isidore Charters, who is an indigenous person in Canada who is working toward reconciliation. And he says, we have got to work together. Now that you know the story, you can help by passing the story on by walking with us. And so that really is that's the way that we can do it. You pass on the story, you learn, you do better and um, you encourage others to do better. So uh, if you are still here through this podcast or through this video, thank you so much um, for helping us tackle this really difficult issue um, and for thinking through this with us and for being open to talking about difficult things. Uh, we would love to hear what your reaction is to this story. Um, you know, did this, did this, story impact you in any way? Like, have you lived an experience like this? Yeah. Um, have you been part of an experience like this or reconciliation even? Uh, write to us in the comments. Um, and if you, uh, if you like thinking about difficult things like this, uh, hit the like button on this video. It helps us spread uh, our videos over YouTube to be honest. Um, and it really helps us out and um, we can get more people talking about these difficult things. Uh, be sure to check out our website, www.spotlightenglish.com. You can find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the, all the places. <laughs> um, get our app for Android or Apple if that's your preference. And uh, you can listen to our podcast anywhere that you can find podcasts. 
Uh, until next time, uh, we hope that you listen, watch, practice, and learn. Spotlight out.